Good afternoon. Uh, glad to see you can join us again. Uh, my name is Richard Lesuer. I'm the host of Weekend Kiwanis. And uh, it's nice to see everybody back. We have a guest with us uh, this afternoon as well. I want to start out by talking a little bit about the uh, governing structure of the Western Canada District. On the last show, we talked about the history of Kiwanis uh, internationally and within Canada. Across, Canada, across Western Canada District, there are seven divisions, and they, each one has a lieutenant governor. There is also a governor-elect, a governor, and a past governor. And to make up the last person on the team for the Board of Trustees is a secretary-treasurer. We all get together and uh, we look at what's happening in the district, how things are going. We meet a number of times a year to help uh, run the district. Also in the uh, hierarchy of the district are a number of, of what we call administrators. They are for the different type, the different uh, family uh, of, of Kiwanis, uh, things like the CKI, Builders Club, Key Club, and uh, Key Leader. So those ones were introduced to you in the last show. This time around, we're going to focus on one. So before we move on, I would like uh, to present to you a little video that we did at our board meeting in October where we all introduced ourselves and uh, you get to see some of the board uh, members and also some of the administrators. Unfortunately, Rob Lussier, the Lieutenant Governor for Division 2, was unable to join us. So uh, we'll have a look at that video now. Hi, my name is Corey Johnson. I am Governor of Western Canada, and I'm from the downtown Florence Club of Calvary. Good, uh, good day to you. My name is Richard Lesuer, Governor-elect uh, from Kiwanis Club of South Edmonton. Hi there, Lori Benito, immediate past Governor, Calvary North Map. Hello, my name is Sean Barrick. I'm the Circle Kid International District Governor, and I'm from the University of Alberta. Hi, my name's Allie. I am the District Administrator for Circle K in the Western Canada District, and I'm a member of two Kiwanis Clubs, the Kiwanis Club of South Edmonton and the Kiwanis Club of Edmonton. Hi, I'm John Collins, Lieutenant Governor for Division One, the West Sport Club in Thunder Bay, Northwest Ontario. Hi, I'm Elaine Chrysler, and I'm Lieutenant Governor for Division Number Four, and I'm from the Moose Jaw Club. Hi, I'm John Lossman. I'm Lieutenant Governor for Division. Five, and that I'm from the Prince Albert Club, uh, Northern Saskatchewan. Hello, I'm Astrid Minnick, Lieutenant Governor for Division Six. My club is Dawson Creek. Hi, I'm Sandra McCurdy, the amazing Lieutenant Governor from the amazing Division Seven. I belong to the old Qantas Club. Hi, my name is Bill Grady. I'm not just another pretty face, and I'm the Lieutenant Governor of Division Eight, and I belong to. The Medicine Hat Wallace Club. Hi, I'm Hazel Gillis, I'm Key Club Court Administrator, and I'm from the Edmonton Oil Capital Quantas Club. Good evening or afternoon or morning. My name is Dirk Bannister, I'm the District Secretary for Western Canada, and I belong to the South Edmonton Quantas Club. The next we'll be doing uh, the uh, swimsuit part is uh, <laughs> It's nice to meet all of you. <laughs> well, as you can tell, we're a very happy crew. We get along really well, and we had a little bit of fun doing the video. Uh, joining me now on the show today is one of our administrators, uh, Ian Taylor. He is the key leader administrator for Western Canada District and also is one of our past governors. So he's fairly knowledgeable on what goes on in the district. I would think. So Ian, can you uh, tell us a little bit about Key Leader? Thanks Richard. Key Leader is a service training weekend for youth, predominantly from ages 14 to 17 or grades 9 to 12. It's oriented to provide those youth the skills they need to become uh, service leaders of the future. Okay. And uh, do we have a lot of those uh, programs every year or? This year in 2011, we had two camps, one at Camp Harness, which is near Gimli in Manitoba, and the second one was at Birch Bay Ranch, which is just outside Edmonton. 
both held on the same weekend in uh, uh, the first to the, or, or sorry, the 30th of September to the 2nd of October. And they were both successful, I understand, eh? They were very successful. We had over 100 uh, young people attending the two camps, and I think they had a very enjoyable and challenging weekend. Well, that's, that's, that's really great. I, I, I like that. And when you're talking about the weekend, how does the structure of the weekend go? What, what is, evolves during that, that time period? Well, the first thing that happens, of course, everybody arrives in the afternoon. Anywhere from 3 to 5. This is Friday afternoon? Friday afternoon, sorry, yes, Friday afternoon. Um, at the same time as when uh, the bulk of the, the kids are getting organized, the lead facilitator, who is a professional that is provided by Qantas International, uh, gives a briefing and an organization structure to anywhere from uh, 7 to 10 student facilitators, who are, again, students, but whose role over the course of the weekend is to provide leadership to their particular group or neighborhood as they are known. There may be six to ten youth in a neighborhood and the student facilitator's job is to provide that continuity, that leadership to that particular group and help them facilitate their activities over the course of the weekend. Yeah, this is a very busy weekend. They're, they're there for the whole weekend and they all uh, the facilities are set up so that they all eat together and everything, are they? Every, everybody eats together. Our, our experience at all the camps we've had, uh, not just these past two, is excellent food, which is always helps. And then about uh, after supper on Friday evening, they start off with a session at 7 o'clock, led by the uh, uh, lead facilitator. And they start on some of, concentrating on some of the, se or five principles, rather, of the uh, the Key Leader Weekend. They will then carry on till 10, 10.30 on, uh, on Friday night before they break for, to try and get some sleep. Being as we've got a bunch of young teenagers, uh, I don't know how much sleep they get the first night. But. <laughs> okay, and then uh, one, assuming they do get some sleep, uh, they have some things that they do together, eh? some, some group work? They do a lot of group work starting again on the Saturday morning. Uh, working in, in their small groups. It's a mix of both uh, general sessions together, then break into small groups to carry out various projects and then report back to, uh, to the general membership, take turns doing that. Following lunch in the afternoon, or at noon rather, they then move into a team building exercises. These, um, and we're a little bit ahead here of the pictures, but um, typically it's an outdoor uh, activity and it well it, the, the the team building is, is a little bit of both isn't it? it they they develop their neighborhoods and identify them do that's they? true there is team building that obviously goes on within their neighborhoods so those eight to ten kids work together all weekend starting on uh, on Friday evening so yes there is a um, a team building that goes on in that as well uh, during the the whole weekend. And then, then later on they also learn to, to work together, right? Yes. So there's, so there's some teamwork and I think uh, you have an example there. Yeah, we have one see. example of, of, of teamwork that's at Camp Arnis in, uh, near Gimli from that, that picture. But typically those are held outside on the Saturday afternoon. Um, there's a series of various different challenges that are both physical and uh, some teamwork required typically on things like uh, rope courses or uh, some cases climbing walls. I, we didn't use climbing walls at either of the past two camps. But there is a, there is a bit of a challenge to There the... is a bit of a challenge. Uh, we had a unique experience. The slide you see there is uh, from Birch Bay and they're on, a, on a, a zip line. We also at Birch Bay were fortunate that we had a, a Cree elder from one of the native academies in, in attendance at, during that afternoon, he also ran some spirit circles for all the participants, not just the, uh, not just the kids, but also all the adults who were present. So I think that was a very interesting experience for a lot of people. Okay, and then um, Saturday evening, typically, the they... Saturday evening, typically, again, it goes after supper till around 10 o'clock. Um, then there is some free time, either building something like a campfire or some sort of activity like that that's more social in nature uh, till about midnight and then uh, um, again 
back to bed up in the morning on Sunday, work till 11.30 and then clear out and, uh, and off they go home. And these uh, key leader camps, uh, I understand that they're really significantly well received by the, by the kids, by the participants. A lot of kids find this a very challenging thing. They come home with a lot of new ideas to how to become service leaders. And not just Kiwanis service leaders, but service leaders in, it could be in their minor sports organizations, in their school groups, or down the road in their community organizations. I think the whole thing is, is, is an excellent opportunity for, for the young people to get involved and to take one of those leadership steps. Exactly. And uh, it's one of the programs that Kiwanis has. We will be talking in future shows about other, other programs as we move along. Uh, thank you very much for filling us in on, you, on, that, on that, Ian. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit about Eliminate, uh, the, the Eliminate project. We, we talked about that uh, last show, and this is uh, a program to eliminate maternal and neonatal tetanus uh, around the world. Uh, last, we, last show, I talked about 42 countries uh, that we were looking at uh, for Kiwanis International. And uh, since then, we've learned that it is now down to 39 countries. They've been able to have great success in, an, in three countries already. And uh, if you look at our website, uh, our, our Facebook page, rather, you will see some of the stories back. Uh, there's a team of UNICEF and Kiwanis people in uh, Sierra Leone. They're just finishing up there right now. And there's some very excellent stories from there. We also want to talk just briefly that uh, some of the clubs, uh, when, when Kwanians as, as individuals and as clubs are supporting the Eliminate program, they can do it by donating from themselves or as a club. Uh, a, quite a number of clubs in the Western Canada District led the way during the iodine deficiency disorder campaign. And uh, now we're leading the way again they're becoming what they call a model club, which means that the club puts forward $750 per member over the, until 1915 to, uh, towards the Eliminate program. So we're very proud of all of the clubs that are doing that, and I'm happy to say that it's getting more and more. The other thing we want to talk about, Ian, just before we finish up, is a convention coming up in February. Yep, that's right. The Circle K International is holding their convention in Edmonton on uh, what is a long weekend in Alberta. Yeah, on the Family Day weekend. So the Circle K folks uh, from <laughs> Circle K folks, the Circle K members from across Western Canada will be meeting in Edmonton in February. We'll hope to talk more about that in January and have a representative of Circle K here with us. So it's going to be quite a good uh, convention. It'll be held at the University of Alberta, and we're very much looking forward to it. Now we'd just like to uh, uh, wrap up by saying that we really appreciate the people watching. It is the festive time of year. It is the giving time of year. As governor-elect for Western Canada District, and I think I can talk for speak for Ian okay. as well, um, the Kiwanians across the district seem to ramp up all the stuff that they do for, for children in their own communities and around the world, and they bring it up even more at this time of year. And we are so very proud of them, and we'd like to thank all of them. Uh, on behalf of the governor who I spoke with yesterday, and he wanted me to pass along his thanks as well. We would like to thank all of you for watching. We hope that you have a safe and happy Christmas and a successful and uh, moving forward into 2020, <laughs> not 2000, oh, it is 2000, into 2012. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next edition of Weekend Kiwanis.